Okay, now that work on the chest and back pieces is done, except for the attachment, time to work on the next phase of the armor projects, which in this case will be the pauldrons. Be using, actually, they're uh, styled after Batman's gauntlets, but for our purposes, these are from the foam cave. I'll just be using the base of the form, the base, and then the uh, centerpieces will be the first raised panels that I'll use to build the uh, weapon and communication units off of. My son has decided he would like to redo the uh, pauldrons we made for his after a different style. So I have downloaded the uh, sturdy metal pauldrons from uh, Much Props. I will be doing these slightly differently than, uh, than he did. I'll start with a base layer of 6mm EVA foam. Then cover that with a layer of eighth inch Sintra. And then I'm going to do two layers of the uh, cover piece using uh, eighth inch Sintra. In this case, I'll be doing one piece, the, the bottom layer of it will be solid, and then the second layer. I'll go in and separate the pieces to give more of a segmented look. All right, got these glued down to some poster board using spray adhesive so I can make some lasting templates. It's about time to get started. All right. At this point, we've got the, the preliminary foam cuts made. We've got the two halves of both the pauldron bases, as well as the base pieces for the four bracers. I did go in and enlarge the bracers because while these were while the base pattern will look great if all you were doing is putting them on over gloves, these are gonna have stuff built on top of them. So, I went for a slightly larger pattern. We're moving. All right, the final pieces of my son's new pauldrons have been cut. These are 1 8 inch Sintra to go over the top of the EVA foam. As discussed previously, I'll be on the central layer for the top cap, I'll be cutting these into three segments. Basically, you just change up the look and make it look a little more, well, unique. But now it's time to start some serious heat forming. All right, as you can see, one, you can see I'm working in the bathroom, what passes for my workshop when I'm working with stuff that shouldn't be worked with in the bedroom. Uh, at this point, I've got the base layers of Thomas at Much Props shoulder pauldrons built. I have the sections of Sintra skin heat formed. I'm getting ready to glue them onto the uh, foam pauldron. All right, got the Sintra covers glued down. As you can see, it, it's a bit uneven, and I do have a nasty gap here that I'm going to wind up having to build some kind of filler for. But all in all, things are still working out. I've got the shoulder caps glued up. Next step will be to install them on those. All 
All right, at this point, I've got the caps on. Admittedly, this one's a little bumpy. Uh, that's because the central wasn't formed as well as it could have been. My son is fine with it, though. So next step is going to be to take the central versions of these caps, cut them into segments, and get them mounted. I've labeled them as to which side is going to be which. And that's going to be next up. This is the latest tool in the arsenal. I picked it up today after watching several of Thomas over at Much Props videos. It's specifically for heat forming Sintra or EVA foam into curved shapes. It's a, you know, globe from a light. I wish they'd had one slightly smaller in diameter, but for now it'll do. Okay, at this point, as you can see, I've got the skin over the foam layer. As, I described, as my son described this, you know, he's building a heavy infantry version. So, no, 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 keep adding armor until I say stop. And that's basically the effect we've got here. I've still got to go in and fill those wonderful gaps, but we are rapidly approaching finish on these. Okay, as you can see, I've gone in with some craft foam. First I went in with a piece underneath what you're seeing here to help level the gap out a little. And then I went in with some craft foam and glued it into place to cover the opening on both sides. I also went in on the left one and repaired some of the seam damage in my attempt to straighten out that mess created. But at this point, these little guys are ready for paint. All right, in the substitute spray booth, we now have coats of Plast Dip on both of the new pauldrons. Once this is dried, I'll go ahead and hit it with coat of the uh, gunmetal. Coming right along. And after a coat of Rust-Oleum soft flat iron, we have a pair of basically finished pauldrons. Do need to put a coat of sealer over them. But with those done, it's time to move on to the bracers. All right, well, this may not seem like much. What I've done here so I've made a template to go over the curve of the forearm and act as a brace for construction of the upper parts of the bracers. I have laid out here 12 of them, three for each bracer. Now it's time to get them cut and mounted. All right, as you can see, I've got the vertical braces mounted, as well as decks of Sintra in place on all four bracers. That'll give me a base to mount, in the case of these two, the frames to hold our cell phones, and in the case of these two, the weapon platforms that'll go on them. All in all, it's been a fairly productive day so far.
All right, at this point, I have the sides glued on. In the case of my son's weapon pod, I deliberately glued it short, partly because he wanted more of a chunky look for his for the rocket launcher that's going to go on here, and partly because, you know, this is a thicker layer of Sintra. The others are glued pretty much flush. Now, in the case of the two weapon pods, there is a gap at the back, but that's all right. It gives me a chance for either Greeblies or to test some uh, of Cosplay Apprentice's foam mo, which we may deal with in the next bit. We'll see. But for right now, we have the end of what has been a very productive day. All right. As you can see, they've built the frame to hold the cell phones. It's a really tight fit. I'd show you, but uh, I'm shooting this on my cell phone. Next step will be to put a cover in 6mm over the 10mm layer here. I use 10mm because it's about the same thickness as the cell phones. Put a, like I said, put a 6mm frame over this. And then uh, Greebly time. All right, as you can see, I've got the sides on, or the tops now on the comm units. Got to trim down the insides of the channels. They're still a little tight for the phones as in you have to force them in and out. Uh, gonna get some foam clay to deal with some of the seamage. The Greeblies I've cast from Alumalite using molds from Evil Ted that I picked up at my local craft store. All in all, it's been a very productive weekend. All right, went in with some old styrene letters and skinned the sides, front and a little bit of the top on the comm units. Then I went in using the silicone molds from EvilTed.com that I picked up at my local craft store. Added some Greeblies to both units. At this point, these two at least are just about ready for primer or plastic dip, whichever. All right. Work has begun, as you can see, on my son's rocket launcher pod for his right arm. This lovely gray mass, which will get sanded down once it cures up, was built from Cosplay Apprentice's foam clay foam mo, as were the tips on the rockets. These are actually cut from lengths of polycarbonate tube left over from a couple of lightsaber builds and these are a couple of chunks of PVC pipe that I uh, cut to length to house those. Slowly but surely we are making progress. Okay, gone in with some sheet styrene and skinned over the foam after leveling it a bit. Sealed up the seams a bit with some putty and then covered the putty with some testers model glue to help it harden. Added a greebly from the Evil Ted bit or the Evil Ted uh, 
silicone mold set. I was going to add more, but my son said sometimes simpler is better. And since this is for him, we're going to call this one basically done except for the clasp system. So at this point, the only bracer I've got left to do is my flame projector. Also gone in and sealed the nose cones of the rockets. All right, working now on my weapon gauntlet. We've gone in and filled the gap on the back roughly with some uh, Cosplay Apprentice Foam Mo. I'll smooth that out once it has a chance to cure. For the tanks of my hand flame unit, I've taken a two and a half inch chunk of EVA foam dowel and a couple of casts from Evil Ted's molds. I've drilled a hole in both of the tanks, for lack of a better term, to accommodate some uh, simulated hoses. The third hose, I'm not sure what I'm going to use for, but we'll get there. Slowly but slowly, this one's taking shape. All right, at this point, basic construction on the flame unit is done. Got the tanks glued on. Went in with some uh, O-ring scraps to simulate the tubing. Built up some base details out of some EVA dowel. The uh, barrel is a cap from an insulin syringe inserted into a EVA dowel and then step ground into it. These two side details are um, six millimeter EVA foam beveled and channeled with my Dremel just to add some detail. At this point, this thing's ready for straps. All right, as you can see, the strapping is now in place on all four bracers, although I haven't closed them on the uh, flamer unit yet. It's basically a, uh, it's actually a three quarter inch clasp, but that's just because I wanted the smaller clasps. And some one inch elastic that I used some Gorilla Super Glue to put in place. They'll easily pop open. making it easier to uh, put on and take off. At this point, the uh, bracers are now ready for plaster dip and color. Okay, we are in what passes in the paint room. As you can see, I've got the coat of plastic dip on all four bracers. Next up will be the metallic coat. Okay, after many delays and much to do, the bracers for my son and I's cosplay, Mandalorian cosplays, are done now. My son still hasn't really decided on a color scheme, so we're still going with the basic metallic and the rocket launchers. The rockets are glued in place. Went in, did some uh, dry brushing with silver. Ah, that's not good. Looks like the uh, sealer tried to eat the paint. It's all right. 
These are Mandalorians. I don't think they're too worried about getting the rockets nice and painted. Com unit, same idea, black wash to bring out the details and the vents and the uh, greebly pieces, as well as some more silver dry brushing. My flame unit went in with the red and black scheme again. Also added some blue to the, to the second tank and line for the flame unit. Same treatment my son's unit got. Silver dry brush, some black wash for detail. Then my comm unit, again the red and black painting detail and some more uh, silver dry brushing. That stage is done now. I'll stick some stills at the end and uh, thank you all for watching.